Vancouver Island marmots lead simple lives, spending up to seven months of the year sleeping. They wake up from hibernation in the spring. Once the snow has melted, they come out of their burrows to feed on wildflowers and grasses. In the spring and summer, marmots are very active, getting up just after sunrise and spending much of the day grazing in the alpine meadow. Marmots are gentle, benign creatures, but they're a group of animals in a lot of trouble. There are less than 150 adults still alive. Vancouver Island marmots have the unpleasant distinction of being the rarest mammal in North America. A group of wildlife biologists, scientists, and field technicians are determined to save this animal from extinction. Their group is called the Vancouver Island Marmot Recovery Team. The mission is simple. Remove one of the world's rarest mammals from the endangered species list. Doug Jans is a regional biologist for the BC Ministry of Environment in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. As a leader of the recovery team, he coordinates most of the rescue effort in the field and behind the scenes. Money is tight, so the team relies on support from a variety of groups and organizations, often on opposite sides of environmental issues. Funding is always a challenge, of course. Over the years, we have uh, fairly uh, traditional, stable contributions from uh, provincial organizations and, and uh, especially the Habitat Conservation Trust Fund. We have um, pretty good uh, support from, from World Wildlife Fund and industry, of course, uh, where most of the marmots are located on, uh, on forest land that's, that's privately owned. Companies such as McMillan Bodell and, and Timber West have been very supportive, both in in-kind support in terms of staff donation and donation of helicopter time. In addition to the larger corporate sponsors, uh, we have a lot of support from, from individual members of the public. We have a program that we call Adopt a Marmot program that for $100 you get a poster and you essentially adopt a marmot and our scientific advisor corresponds with the adoptees to let them know what the status of their, of their marmot. Andrew Bryant is a wildlife biologist and an environmental consultant. He has studied Vancouver Island marmots since 1986 and is the scientific advisor to the recovery team. Well, we got our first marmot of the year down there. Um, our high count for this spot down here is, is precisely one animal this year and it uh, looks like he or she is still there. We don't know whether it's male or female. I really uh, I like to take people to this spot. I think it's very unusual to be able to stand on a mountaintop and, and literally be able to see the the world range for a mammal species. Um, so what we're looking at here is the the marmot epicenter of the world. Uh, it's about 150 square kilometers and it contains 99 percent of, uh, of Vancouver Island marmots. The, the question of course is what's going on with the population trend? Um, now counting marmots is not exactly an exact science. Um, they're hard to count. But to give you some perspective on it, uh, in 1984, inventory biologists counted 235 marmots. Um, applying some kind of a correction factor to that number to, to account for underestimation, uh, that probably means that there were, there were over 300 marmots, call it 350. Um, last year, our high count was 101 marmots. That was despite the most intensive survey ever conducted and the most experienced field crew ever ever put out. Um, so we probably have a world population of about 150 animals. That, that certainly doesn't give us a, a very comfortable feeling and, uh, and it's certainly not very encouraging to realize that we've probably lost uh, about 60 percent of the entire population of this species in the last 10 years. People think about working with uh, endangered species as a, as a life filled with glamour, uh, playing with animals on tops of mountains. And uh, in, in truth, there's a lot of that, and I still enjoy it, but, but much of the work actually happens here, um, where, where I spend a, a great deal of my life uh, sitting in front of a computer screen looking at, at pages and pages and pages 
of, of data. Uh, what you're seeing here is actually the, the survival rates for animals that I've been watching for 10 years. A lot of times, um, patterns in the data um, that are not obvious when you're in the field start to emerge when you actually start to um, analyze these data statistically. So this is one of the reasons, for example, how we've learned um, that animals in the clear cuts do not uh, tend to be as successful over the long term as those in the uh, natural habitats. The interesting thing when you look at a, at a map of distribution records is, is twofold. One is that we have the world population of the species that is essentially concentrated. Uh, about 90% of the animals that we know about are found in a very small area of about 150 square kilometers. The second thing that jumps out at you is that marmots have disappeared from areas where, where they used to live as recently as 20 or 30 or, or even 50 years ago. So the problem is essentially that we have all of our eggs now in one very small basket and the essential thrust and focus of the recovery program is to build more eggs and produce more baskets. W one of the problems for Vancouver Island marmots uh, are these guys, cougars. And uh, not only cougars, probably wolves and, and golden eagles as well. Um, this is a transmitter. Uh, so what we actually do, this, this um, transmitter, which is actually encased in surgical grade beeswax, is actually implanted surgically into the marmot in the peritoneal cavity. And uh, this allows us to, uh, to determine various things, uh, including what happens to the marmot. Uh, this is a pristine transmitter that has not been used. And uh, what I'm holding in my hand now is a transmitter that actually uh, probably went through either a wolf or a cougar. Of the seven animals that I surgically implanted with transmitters in 1993, four of them were recovered like this. This tells me that a probably pretty small population of cougars and wolves are having a dramatic impact on the marmot population. Simply, they know where they live and uh, they've become very highly proficient predators upon Vancouver Island marmots. Again, another reason why the eggs in one basket distribution is not healthy. People often ask me, um, you know, these Vancouver Island marmots have evolved with cougars and, and wolves, so, so why is it different today? The problem is not so much that cougar numbers or wolf numbers have increased so much, um, is that their alternative prey um, which is black-tailed deer, have declined as precipitously. In fact, we, uh, we probably have a deer decline out there of about 80% in the last 10 years.